out the mud. It feel different when you get it out the mud. How you guys doing? Welcome to a special edition of Conversation Over Chess, an athlete's edition. The 10 individuals that are stopping by the show today had more accolades than I can list out on my little note card. As the fellas say, I'm him. Well, today these ladies are individually her. Across, the, across these 10 young ladies, we have just about every Division I school has been offered. Some ladies have even represented their country at the national level, all while still killing the Boo Williams and EYBL and AAU circuits. Be sure to pay close attention to the, to, while they introduce their names, because short of an injury, I can guarantee these ladies will be playing on TV. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Hi, my name is Zen Kraft and I'm class of 2025. I'm Candace Samuels and I'm class of 2027. I'm Khalid DeVillashi and I'm class of 2025. I'm Kai Roberson and I'm class of 2026. I'm Teresa Higgins and I'm class of 2025. My name is Nevaeh Roberson, I'm class of 2027. I'm Nala Brooks, I'm class of 2025. I'm Naya McCoy, class of 2027. I'm Amira Anderson, class of 2025. I'm Princess Moody, class of 2025. And I'm Stephon Hampton, owner and CEO trainer at uh, Hampton Workout Facility. All right, ladies, how you guys doing today? This is when we get comfortable. This is when we get a little relaxed. You can let your hair down, so to speak. And the first question that I want to pose to the panel is, of course, how is the boot camp going? It's OK. I know the trainer's right here. You don't got to talk about them too bad. So how is the actual boot camp going for yourself? Starting with you, Zen. Um, it's going pretty good, you know, just, you know, making my body stronger. Um, I can feel the, oh, I can feel the difference, um, you know, just like my legs getting stronger, my arms getting stronger. Um, you know, it's a little sore, but, you know, that comes with everything that comes with the work, so. Okay. Who else? Um, honestly, it's, it's good. I just feel like it's just. It's, 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 it's so good, good you have no words. <laughs> it's good, but I'm really sore. Um, that's my first day, so. I can't really say nothing, but the yoga was good. Um, I think it's been a great experience so far. Pretty educational. Um, like Candace said, my body's pretty sore. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good experience. Uh, the camp was good. It was a good experience. I'm just really sore. Um, camp has been good. We, I think today was a good day to like rest and recovery. And the past days I've been sore. Um, yeah. Uh, Coach Hampton been killing me. My butt hurt. My arms <laughs> hurt. It's like now I'm just, I'm just flying this land. Now it's been a, it's been a good, a good camp. Um, you know, a lot of talent around. So you know, we all just getting that work and trying to get better. Yeah, it's been good. I feel like I learned new stuff. I can work on it at home. And yeah, that's it. Uh, today was a good day. We got some recovery, and the camp's its whole purpose is just get us ready for July. So it's really good. Um, it's been going good. I mean, we're getting better every day, so. Okay. Getting better every day. I hear you guys are working you guys hard. So for yourself, what are you guys specifically looking to train the ladies on uh, as you go through this week-long boot camp? Well, the whole purpose of the camp was to pretty much prepare them for tournament play. So these ladies all compete on a national level, and in July they have national tournaments going on, two tournaments. So my goal was to just get them prepared. I know they sore, but not to kill them like they say. It's just really get them how to move their body, what things they should have been doing, doing in season and tournament. So that way in the future, even if they're not training here, they know, okay, this I should prepare my body for this type of uh, competition, this type of level of intensity I'm going to be working on in July. So it just used to day they have recovery day, which they're going to do every time on Wednesdays. So now they understand because a lot of them, I spoke to them yesterday, that they work out so much. Yeah. But to them, it's, that's just them trying to get better and, and fun to them. But they have to understand that I still got to take care of my body so it perform well. Definitely. One question that I want to pose to the panel is that during the introduction, I had listed off that basically each one of you ladies have multiple offers across the country. But your hometown may reside in the DMV area. So how do you all individually feel about time away from home? Being away from mom, being away from dad, being away from grandma, being away from your brothers, your sisters, their loved ones, your support. Cast. So how do you think that would have, uh, how does that time away from home affect you going away to college soon? Um, I'm really big on family. My family is really important to me. It's my, my dad, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, my grandma. Um, so when I came down to my college decisions, I decided to stay on, my east, on the East Coast. 
Um, I really did like the schools out west, um, but that flight out there to Nike TLC every year was just not it for me. <laughs> so I just decided, you know, stay uh, east coast. And I have schools that are down south, you know, so that's like a 13 hour drive to Florida. That's good enough for me. But as long as I can get like that one flight home, that's that's cool for me. Um, I don't really, I'm, I like staying home. So it's like, I don't really like to go away from home. So it's definitely going to be a big transition, like for me, because usually I see my parents uh, in the like stands and stuff. But I definitely pick schools that's close to home. And I want to stay close to home because it's like I want my family to be there. I want to see my brothers like cheering and all of that. Um, Yeah, honestly, I would like to stay close to home because I'm also really big on my family and my brothers who are also currently in college, they they're pretty much on the East Coast right now. So I really just like to stay close to them. Uh, personally, me, I don't have a problem with staying away from my family because I'm also from New York and when my parents was living in New York and I moved down here without them. It was a big change, but like I progressively got through it. Um, well, I it's kind of I, I think I've like to stay close to home because like I'm also really big on family um, and um, yeah, I'm just big on family. Uh, well, I have, I have family all around. So, I mean, my immediate family is like, you know, the ones I come home to every day. So I got nieces and nephews, you know, my mom and dad and stuff, my sisters, my support system. Um, I'm almost definitely, I most definitely miss them when I go on the road and stuff. So, I mean, I just got to do what I do and get back home immediately. So, but like in college and stuff, I mean, hopefully with all this NIL going on, they could, you know, fly them out and stuff like that. So I could see them on the regular games and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's going to take a toll on me, but at the same time, not really. Yeah, I don't think it will affect me as much because I want to, like, travel and get out the area. But, I mean, I don't know. I'm stuck between, like, staying with the area and traveling, but I do want to travel and experience new things. Uh, I'm going to be going up to Boston College, so it's not like it's across the country, but it's still a little far, so... It's definitely going to be an adjustment because I'm really close to my family, especially my mom. But that's why I really like that it's in the ACC. So there's a bunch of games that they can come and see me on away games. So it's going to be an adjustment. But I kind of like the idea of not being right around the house. Um, I don't want to be close to home. I want to be away from home. So uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem for me. I don't want to be close at all. Um, probably don't want to come back, so, you know, I'll be fine, you know, being away from home, so, yeah. All right, and then what about yourself, Hampton? You have a lot of sacrifice of time away from your family. Uh, what about that is a payoff for yourself? Because it's always, while well, you're here with these ten, 10 young ladies, you're away from your own daughter and your own wife. So what about that sacrifice is about paying off for you at the end, are you looking for? Uh, just saying to go to school, like, uh, all the athletes I train, I don't talk about them going pro. So my main thing, I just care about giving them scholarship and learning and getting better. That's my most important thing. So when I see that happens, I feel like it's worth it. When these kids come back, as you see the banners we have in the, in the gym, that's, that's my uh, like the thank you for you know showing that you appreciate the time I gave you and that rewarded me back with you know, one of the banners. So, but like summertime right now, it does, it gets hectic because I'm in here so early. Yeah. So I have switched my schedule for the evenings to spend more time with the family. So I try to do everything in the morning now so I can get that time back. No, definitely for sure. It's always a sacrifice. And one thing that you all ladies can speak to is that it's always a time invested into what you do, right? You want to hone in on your skills. You're here in this hot gym right during the summertime because I'm assuming you all individually want to be the best, right? So the one panel question that I want to pose to everybody before we get into the individual questions is how do you have, how do you think your game and your skills currently will transfer over to the next level and what do you think you might need to work on now it's time to pay these bills this episode is brought to you by legendary apparel by kimaj the creator don't let the fly name or my fly fit fool you legendary apparel is a one-stop shop for all streetwear and essentials outside of the items that i'm wearing he also offers bags sweatsuits shoes canvases you name it he has it also, you're in for a treat. If you use the promo code COCP, which stands for Conversations Over Chess Podcast, you'll get free shipping. I repeat, free shipping. Also, be sure to visit his website. Link in the description or up on the screen. Be sure to give him a follow at the two underscores creator, K-R-E-A-T-O-R. 
Forget staying thirsty, my friends. Stay legendary. Legendary Apparel, the presenting sponsor of Conversations Over Chess. Peace. Now back to the podcast. Um, I think my versatility is a really big part of my game, being able to, you know, play multiple positions, do what my coaches ask, um, and not being afraid to do that because you need someone who does that for the team. Um, and I think that's definitely going to help me with the next level, you know, being able to pick up on new things, IQ-wise, um, defensive plays, offensive, um, and just being with the, being, doing what the coach needs you to do. Um, you said what else? And just how do you, what skills you might need to work on? At- um, just, you know, finishing, of course, you know, ball handling, um, just being more, being more consistent is what I really want to work on. Um, you know, just like I said, finishing around the rim. Um, having a high motor um, all the time, you know, blocking shots, playing defense, you know, doing everything. I've learned that everything is not about scoring. You know, there has to be other factors that you do to contribute to the team to help win. All right. Um, so like Zen said, I'm definitely good with uh, playing different positions and all positions, but I feel like I need to work on my mid-range more and definitely ball handling. I feel like... Um, at the next level, like the mid range is going to get me like past a lot of stuff because a lot of people are so focused on like layups or like threes, like, and I want to expand my range too. Um, it's a lot of stuff I need to still work on. Like, oh my fault. It's a lot of stuff I need to still work on. Like everything is still like a skill that needs to be worked on to get better. Cause everything is not like at its best. So. Everything like is gonna get worked on, but I feel like the mid range is gonna set me like away from others. Um, similar, similar to what Bit said. Um, I think that mid range is also well. I'm like working on like perfecting it, and I think that mid range is like one of the parts of my game that might um, transfer to the next level. Um, people think of it as like a lost art, so I'm pretty sure that you know it's kind of taken for granted and yeah I mean yeah but the things that um, I need to work on is like the fact that like learning the like understanding the fact that I don't always have to score like I can also like contribute on defense and yeah oh uh something that can help you uh I feel like for me, like my versatility and change of pace during that game. Of course, what everybody else was saying, the mid-range part too. But something that I'm working on right now is probably just talking more and incorporating my mid-range more in the game, like knowing when to do it, stuff like that. Um, well, in the game, I am like a tall guard. I like rebound, score, defense, play defense, um, do, do a little bit of everything. And I think that'll translate in college. Um, I am like coachable and um, yeah, but I think what I need to work on is just like Zen said, being consistent and um, and yeah. Uh, I think my game but could I transfer. Would say for me, not I say defense. <laughs> nah, <ain't> not. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> nah, you straight, you straight, you straight. Nah, I think my game could transfer over to the next level. Uh, by many ways, I'm a I'm a big R, so I like to dribble. You know. Get to my spots, though. <laughs> get to my spot. I like the three ball. Um, you know, so being being my side at the next level, I got to get stronger, of course. Uh, I want to get my hops up. Um, just you know, IQ. I think that's gonna come with you know growing and stuff like that. But you know, just keep doing what I'm doing. Be consistent. Be efficient at what I do, and just you know, keep doing my thing on the court. So yeah. All right. What I was about to say was, so you know, <laughs> for me, I would say my defense and being able to like get my teammates involved in the game. Something I need to work on, I would say being more confident in my mid-range and being more vocal as a point guard. Uh, I'm a really hard worker. I'm always staying after and shooting and stuff. So I'm going to definitely continue doing that when I get to college. But I really think my shooting is going to translate. I'm a three-point shooter. That's what I really focus on. And I got some range. So the new three-point line won't really be a problem. But uh, <laughs> I definitely want to uh, focus on improving my conditioning and foot speed. So that'll help my defense and stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what Nair said, I feel like I'm really good at getting my teammates involved. And my defense is pretty good. Also, like, my shooting has gotten, like, uh, really good, too, so I think that would transfer, too. But something I could probably work on is, like, 
probably like I don't even know like communicating more I don't really like to talk on the court I mean I talk but it's not like that type of you know <laughs> so uh probably more of that and uh like you know just working on like you know what Kalia said mid-ranges um that's probably more too so yeah all right my, my three balls are already kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. so you, you, know, you guys princess and uh Amir and don't recent, tell me that you, you know, beat him in a three-point contest <laughs> she did win you yeah. know, we, 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 get, we do a little competition here. You do the best out of five, but you know, okay. three ball crazy. I ain't really got nothing to work on. Well, know. I was going to say, I, I have a follow-up question for yourself, but uh, I have a stat that these ladies probably don't even know about myself. But as well as for yourself, the same question. You have a, knowledge, you have a lot of knowledge and skills already for working out in individuals. Where do you think you need to elevate your game and knowledge to get other people better as well? Uh, so I've been dealing with so many players that come in with, like, uh, different injuries. Uh, especially the ACL work with a lot of those. So lately, I'm thinking about, you know, more PT work, uh, getting back into that. I got into the ACL injury because I tore mine, okay. and so I learned a lot doing that. So that's how I've been working with so many. But just trying to pretty much learn more with that, and uh, I've been getting more into nutrition lately too. Okay. That's always good. Uh, before I get into the individual questions, I guess you – I bet you guys did not know that I have a AAU record. Did you know that that is an actual thing? An AAU record. So, yeah, AAU, amateur athletic again. You, you, you. So I hold the record for the most missed layups in a single season. That's me. So look, mama, I made it, all right? So just remember, I was in the record books and you're interviewing somebody famous. Most missed layups, don't worry about the stat, just know that it's a stat that's there, all right? <laughs> but for real, all jokes aside, before we get into the individual questions, I actually um, just want to always say thank you guys. I always typically start the podcast by saying thank you, but I forgot to do that, but I just wanted to make sure I said thank you all individually and collectively for your time, because this next 45 minutes to an hour, you may not ever get back again. So I always wanted to make sure I give you my grace and say thank you. All right. Uh, and just going into the individual questions, Miss Samuels, where are you at? Right here. So as a as I was doing research and preparing for you, I saw that you have an older sister who plays at UConn currently. And oddly enough, my research team confused you with her. And I had to go back and follow up to say, hey, look, this is not that same individual. How often does your sister playing at a big Division One school with the name of UConn, having that shadow, so to speak, affect how you ap approach the game to either surpass her or to compete with her? Um, can you ask again? Because, like... <laughs> Can you ask me? Yeah, not a problem. So having a sister that plays at another level, how often are you competing to be out of her shadow or to surpass her in everything that she does in the game of basketball? Oh. Yeah, you don't know. Can you? I'll repeat it. I'll ask it differently. Are you in your sister's shadow currently? No. No, and why not? Because I'm, I don't want to, like everyone says, I need to follow in her footsteps, but I just don't feel like, I feel like I need to have my own. So you're creating your own path and your own destiny. That's what I should have asked the first time around. So thank you. Miss Moody, where are you at, Miss Moody? <laughs> <laughs> having a brother, uh, and correct, he's a twin? Yeah. So having a twin brother, having that camaraderie, going back to the similar question that I asked earlier, how do you think time away from him will affect you guys' relationship? Um, well, we pretty much want to be in the same area, so I don't think that's like going to affect our relationship. We're actually really close. Like right now, he doesn't really live with me; he lives with his coach. So I mean, I'm kind of used to not being, you know, with him. But like when I am with him, I, you know, it's still the same. I mean, less fighting, but you know. Now it's time to pay these bills. Think global, act local. The world is yours. Offers the coolest men's fashion and accessories at 104 William Street in Newburgh, New York, my hometown. It's also available at theworldisyours.com. That is W-R-L-D-I-Z-Y-O-R-Z.com. Be sure to use the discount code COCP, which stands for Conversations Over Chess Podcast, to get 10% off. I repeat, 10% off all of your purchases. Again, world is yours, W-R-L-D-I-Z-Y-O-R-Z.com. 10% discount code on the screen. Get you some. Now back to the podcast. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and Miss Teresa, 
<laughs> While preparing for this interview, I've seen that you actually played against Gigi and met Kobe Bryant. Having them die and having that affect the entire country, like the, literally the world was affected by that. How has that death affected you, knowing and playing against an individual who was at that level? <laughs> you played against Gigi, correct? Yeah. And you met Kobe Bryant, right? Yeah. How has that death affected you? They're dying. Kobe Bryant, how he affected the game, how he brought eyes to the WNBA, things like that. How has that death affected you at all, if at all? Um, of course it's sad. And, you know, it was hard at first because when everybody was telling me, I thought it was fake because stuff like that be fake. But uh, how has it affected me? I feel like it just makes me work harder because, you know, he was a big part of the game. And his daughter was on the come up, too. So, And that's why I wear number two, too. Well, that's why I wear number two also. But, yeah, it, I feel like it just makes me work harder. All right, and then Miss Craft. One thing while preparing for an interview, I didn't know that we actually have a mutual person that we know, Brian Lomax. I guess you are related to him some way, somehow? Yeah, he's my cousin. Yeah, so he's actually a really good close friend of mine, and I did not know that when we came to see you play that you mm -hmm. guys were related at that time. Um, while preparing, though, I seen that there was a, a poem or poetry, something that you either was written or sent to you. Uh -huh. When you run MVP, was that something that you wrote? wrote? Um, no, my um, one of my closest friends, uh, Kennedy Austin, who plays on Take a Rule with me, she wrote that for me. Okay. Afterwards. How do you express yourself outside of basketball then? Um, outside of basketball, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm like 50-50. Like, I like being, I'm a homebody. Okay. So, um, I like being indoors. But, like, when I have those close friends, like, who be like, you want to do something? Like, I'm, yeah, I'm all for it, everything like that. Um, you know, I don't really get to rest that much. So, you know, whenever I do have downtime, I really do like to enjoy it. Um, I'm a big foodie. I have a dog. Um, I'm really close with my family. Yes, I'm a big foodie. Um, <laughs> I like to, you know, I can't even say I like to eat. Never mind. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I feel like I'm a pretty fun person, like, especially with people I'm really comfortable with. Like, I'm always messing with, like, Princess or Q or everything like that, just bothering them. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I just, I enjoy having, like, being around people I'm really close with, so. That's always good. I was going to say, being around people that are closest to you in a close-knit family is always important, especially when you go out into this world that could be crazy and everything that comes along right. with it. Uh, Nevea, where are you at? Right here. Um, oh. While preparing for the interview, I saw that while in your earlier years, you and your sister would be practicing outdoors, doing this, that, and the third, like literally summertime, outside dribbling drills, everything. So the question that I want to pose to you is that you're putting in the work. How bad do you want it? And what are you willing to sacrifice to get to what you want? Good question. Um, well, I, I am like really dedicated because um, my dad, he pushes my, me and my sister every day and we we want we just want the end result so um since 2020 we've been outside on the court um quarantine of course but um with my brothers and we just my brothers wanted the same thing they they just I, they're really big big role models on us but um but i just want the end results and i want it so bad because like i've been working every day every day since shoot i don't know like i was yeah. like i remember and, and what is that end result specifically <laughs> the end results just getting the place where i need to be like the like top colleges and um and just beyond that like wnba and yeah. yeah i wanted to make sure i specifically asked this so when you get to that place i'm gonna replay this clip yeah. and then you're gonna be like dang i actually got there uh nyla where are you at so, are you from New York? I wanted to ask you that. No, no, you're no, not from no, New York. I'm not, I'm not from New York. That's, yeah, a, that's a, a New York connection right there. I, I, think, I can say you're though. I'm yeah, 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 let me hear a big year. <laughs> let me hear a big one. <laughs> now, I saw that preparing for the interview. I saw that you had committed and then decommitted from Tennessee. Yes. Can you talk us through why that decision was made? Um, so basically, I committed to Tennessee. Um, probably about my sophomore year. Okay. Um, it was early. It was my dream school. I wanted to go there um, since I was like in middle school. You know, I always had Tennessee stuff on. A lot of people wanted Tennessee that I knew. They always talking about their experience, a great experience. So I went on campus and committed. Um, I did commit it, though, um, due to the coaches' changes. So okay. uh, the coaches left. They got fired, sadly. But um, it opened a lot of opportunities for me, though. So 
Um, but it, it was Tennessee still, you know, in my in my top top schools and stuff like that. But you know, I just want to open my recruitment back up. You know, get a lot of looks, opportunities, and stuff, and you know, just more blessings. So, yeah. Okay, understood. And then Kai, where you at? Right next to your sister. Uh, as I mentioned earlier with your sister, you guys have both been putting in the work since you guys were like wee lads, young ladies. Yeah. So with you guys both putting in the same work, same amount of hours, who would you say is the better sister? Oh. In it's terms okay. Of... It's okay if you want to you say I'll kill her. It's okay. It's oh, okay. <laughs> you mean as in like skill? Skills, yes. Oh, um, I mean, we, I mean, obviously we kind of have different skill sets, like, we have this like similar skill sets, but like the way we like play is different. Okay. So I mean, it's all right. You're taking the political side. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean, she. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm the the lesser sister. I mean, what she she has more offers. She's yeah. I mean, she has more offers, but like. Yeah. I don't know. That's I, I wouldn't that say I'm like the lesser sister answer. because of that, though, you know? Okay. But you guys, like you I said, you, like you mentioned, you guys have similar playing styles, things yeah. like that, but you guys are still putting in the work together. Yeah. Offers are just spewing through the roof. So either way, it seems like you guys will get to that same destination that she's speaking to, no matter what, by continuously putting in the work. So I understand. Thanks for taking the political answer. There you go. <laughs> PR training right there. This yeah. is uh, Kalia. So. What's going on? As a five foot seven guard, how do you think? <laughs> hey, why was that? Why was that funny, Jane? Zen, you took that personal. I'm sorry, no, she's sorry. <laughs> she took. <laughs> Anywho, as a five foot seven guard and seeing other guards your similar height kill at the next level, right? A bunch of guards at your same height. Mm -hmm. How do you think you have a advantage or disadvantage at being that height at the next level? Um, I would never say height is a disadvantage to anybody. Uh, it's all about your mindset. Like if you go in thinking, oh yeah, I'm short, so I'm a be like less of a person like than other people, then that's your mindset right there. Um, I go in like to colleges thinking confidently. I can still play, I can still hoop. I'm still hooping against like six foot people and still doing damage. So Talk your I stuff. feel like it's all about your mentality and confidence at the end of the day and like the work you put into it. Like it doesn't matter about your height, you know? Yeah, and how uh, can you rattle off some of the offers that you currently have? Um, Do you have any at this current moment? I got, yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so can you just rattle off just a few? Uh, I got, um, <laughs> I can get y'all my top seven. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I literally just need two or three to point to prove a point to the young girl that is the same height as you. That's oh. being down on her height where you're going to the next level and have multiple offers. Okay. So that's why I specifically asked that question. Okay. Because people might see the height and be like, oh, no, no, no. But you have just seven you can name off the top of your head. Okay. So I don't want that to go over the individual audience's head. I got you. I got Clemson, Georgia, Cincinnati, Virginia Tech, um, UNC. How many I just named? That's enough. Okay. I'll look into my camera and let any young lady that is out there, regardless of your height, you can go to the next level. Yes. The willing course. testament right here. Yes. All right. Nair, where you at? <laughs> While preparing, I saw you had dropped a rap battle at like six years old <laughs> on your Instagram. <laughs> Are you a future rapper over there? <laughs> You gotta go to the mic, to the mic, to the mic, to the mic. How old was that? that video. You gotta go talk to the mic. All right, I ain't post that video. My father did. He controlled my account. How how, <laughs> how old were you in that video, please? Because you were like dropping seven, hot fire bars. Eight. You were eight years old. Yeah. Okay, you was rhyming a little bit. <laughs> so is it safe to say you are not pursuing a rap career? No, I will not be doing that. Okay, but on a serious note, what are you looking forward to at the next level? At the next level, just being an impact player and being able to like showcase my talent, not just be to the on mic. the bench. Well, not just be on the bench. You know, just a college player, just sitting there, just saying like, just not being able to touch the floor, I guess. Now it's time to pay these bills. This episode is brought to you by DJ DMC. For any parties, kickbacks, and weddings, DJ DMC has your back.
You can find him on Instagram at DMC the Goat on Instagram at DMC the Goat. Please be prepared to pay the cost as seen on my shirt. He also makes his clothing line, great premier brand, and be sure to reach out to his Instagram as well at Pay the Cost LLC on Instagram. That is Pay the Cost LLC on Instagram. Get you some. Now back to the podcast. Okay. And then last but not least, Amira, uh, while preparing for the interview, I seen that you had already committed to Boston College and you were actually quoted by saying that they laid out a detailed plan and video on how you fit into the system. So what did you like about that detailed plan that allowed you to no longer take any other visits and commit directly to Boston College? Uh, Boston College, they had seen me early on in my sophomore year and like I hadn't really been getting like kind of like the national recognition that I am now. So the fact that they kind of believed in me, uh, saw that I could fit in, uh, relationships are really important and I wanted to go somewhere where I was wanted. So um, they like put pulled a bunch of my clips and kind of mixed it in with like some of their stuff. So it would be like one of their plays and it would cut into me doing the similar action. Okay. So it just showed that like my skill set, like I, I don't want really to have to change too much. So that was very important to me. And um, I'm really close to all the coaches and some of the girls there. So I just was like, why, why wait kind of. Yeah. And one thing I want the individual audience member to take away is that out of you 10 young ladies, right? You guys are hoopers, but you are a lot more things outside of that. You aren't just basketball. You aren't just a bit, the thing that you're dribbling. You bring other facets to the game outside of that school, family, friends, all of those things. So I wanted to make sure that we always shine light on those things. So is there any is there any hidden talents to the group? Is there anything that you guys do outside that's for fun? So obviously one point is I play chess. I travel the world talking to individuals over a game of chess. So is there any hidden talents? I ain't gonna lie, I used to play the clarinet. <laughs> well, he said play the clarinet? Yeah, I, I used to, I used to on middle I used school. to play the trombone and the trumpet. Ain't yeah, no I, I, I used to, I used to. Nobody don't even know me knowing that. It's all right, so, like, nobody's yeah. watching, nobody's yeah, listening. But no, nobody's I, like, listening. I, like, I like riding four wheelers too. Like okay. their bikes and stuff, yeah, I like doing that. And yeah, that's about it. All right. Um, well, I, I used to play piano when I was like, like last year, but well, I just stopped. But okay. um, some, another thing I like to do, I sometimes like to do this do like art. Just sometimes just do art. So yeah. Anyways. All right. Um, and then Zen's the last one and or you yeah, got one? Or Well, Zen's the last one didn't pass over. <laughs> okay, so my hidden talent is I played the violin for four years. I was a second chair, so that means like you like if you're first chair, that means you're the best. So I was second. But I dropped it. Um and then after that, I'm a big Lego kid, so if you play with Legos, we are instantly friends, and yeah. <laughs> All right. And then one question uh, that I have for Hampton before we pose the last question for the panel and get up out of here is that what are you looking forward to in the future with specifically relating to women's basketball surrounding the game? Uh, pretty much just one of my goals was to change women's basketball training, meaning by tr pushing them and t doing the things that they want to do you know, on that next level. It's everybody, sometimes people train the women, like, hey, these girls, you're gonna take it back a little bit. I didn't ever want that. So I want that to be something that's going on, not just here, but throughout across the country, that these girls want to be pushed hard. They want to, they want to work just as hard as the men and, you know, and, and treat them like that. So that's, that's just my ultimate goal. And well, one more thing would be probably not just here, but people know about this place across the country to say, hey, uh, like, Vince, like Candace, Zen, anybody, Nyla, hey, we all going at home. Uh, I'll probably go back home and work with my guy, Coach Hampton, yeah. and people across say, can I come with you? You know, something that's known across the country. So yep. that's like one of my ultimate goals, just to be outside of the DMV area. Definitely. And the last question that I'll pose to the panel, obviously, being women's sports, being in the, playing the game of basketball, I'd be remiss not to mention the Angel Reese and the Caitlin Clarks of the world, right? So how, the question is, how, first off, do you understand your own power, right, that you hold in the game of basketball, NIL deals, things like that? And then how are you looking to have your individual impacts on the game? What are you looking to impact? Change anything at all? How would I want to impact? Yes. Um, because your voices are being heard now more than ever between the two young ladies that I just mentioned pro previously. Yeah, definitely just with like the Andrew Reese and Kaylin Card, they really brought a bigger light to um, women's basketball. I feel like the light was growing, but like definitely with them being in college and 
their momentum and their influence and their NILs and everything, they definitely shine a, shined a big, bigger light. And just to like continue on, I just want to continue growing that light. You know, there's little girls all around the country in the DMV area that look up to all 10 of us, you know, even though we're so young. Um, and just, you know, continue to motivate and encourage them. Like, you know, there are some days like you really don't feel like doing it, but you know, at the end goal, like helping our parents, they put all this into us, you know, our family, our friends, everyone wants to see us succeed. So, you know, just working hard for them and then for those little girls is what I really want to do. Go. To the mic. Um, I definitely agree with Zim. Probably just keep working hard and showing people that look up to us like you can really be good and stuff. Um, I just want to show that like anything is possible. If you just keep working out your craft, it don't got to be just basketball. Like, and it doesn't just got to be like girls, boys and girls at like a young age. Like, just keep working at your craft. Um, the sky's the limit for everybody, you know? So like, you can get to the spot you're gonna get at if you believe it and if you work hard at it. I feel like, like an impact I wanna make on women's basketball is that um, everyone's journey is really different. So it's okay if your, your um, progress doesn't look the same as everyone else's. And uh, yeah. I feel like, uh, can you say the question again? Yeah, so what impact are you looking to make on a game of basketball in its entirety? Um, probably just bring more attention to the sport. Like like what you said, Andrew Reese and Kayla Clark have already paved the way for us. But like, I feel like as all 10 of us come up and more athletes in the DMV and all around the world, yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I feel like all all the athletes around the world could just bring more attention to the sport. Um, I feel like I can show like girls in the future, little girls in the future, like how dedication works, like fights toward the future, and how your mindset, your mental game can impact um, just the game at all. Just um, wait, let's go. yeah, just the mental game. Uh, I want there to be more Andrew Reese and more Caitlin Clarks in the world. I mean, I want little girls to grow up and be like, yeah, I want to go to the WNBA. Like, and I want action, you know, action. So, you know, players get more more money. Um, just, you know, just putting their mind to it. I mean, like, I want the game to expand where literally, like, everybody looking at, looking at WNBA now because, you know, it's on the come up and stuff. But I want it to be consistent. I want everybody to watch it, you know, because I feel like the WNBA is one of the toughest leagues, you know, ever played in, to be honest. So, I mean, it's because we women don't really, you know, mean anything. But, you know, I feel like I want more people to watch and, you know, expand more attention, like T said. So, yeah. All right. How uh, – what I would say is, you know, how Angel Reese and Kayla Clark already done started away. I just wanted to continue to grow. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, and I want like, you know, I'm a short point guard, and I feel like everybody big on height, and like you gotta be this size, this size. But I feel like if I'm able to like show that you could do it at what at whatever height you is, it don't matter like if you shorter than anybody, like you still can do it. And I feel like, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I definitely love watching women's hoops like college and WNBA and just seeing people uh, like play. It definitely like inspires me and I really like shows that like I want to be there too. So I just want to work hard and be in a position where I could be that for someone in the future. Um, I just want the games to continue to grow. I mean, right now I feel like the class of 2025, we are the best class for real. So everyone's going to, you know, watch us. <laughs> everyone's everyone's going to watch us. We're always going to get a lot of attention. So I feel like once we all get to college, you know, and, you know, hopefully the WNBA, you know, it's, it's the game's going to expand more. We're going to get more viewership, you know. It, hopefully more things that the men are getting because right now it's a little unfair, but it's fine. Um, but, yeah, just, you know, continue making the game. All right. So, yeah.
All right, I appreciate you ladies for stopping by Conversations Over Chess. I want every individual that's out there, any lit woman, no matter what your size is, what your height is, whatever you're doing in this world, chase your dreams. These 10 ladies are the embodiment of putting in the work and that work prevailing. So no matter what, young lady, my niece at home, love you, Kenya, everybody out there, chase your dreams, putting the work, good things come to those who wait. See you guys on the next episode of Conversations Over Chess. Peace. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Nothing ever comes to a sleeper but a dream. So I'm woke, try and get that money any means. Used to watch mom sweat them clothes to get them clean. Grew up in the slums, ain't shit that I ain't seen. And it's still free, all the guys till they free. Couple niggas crippin' and the others throwing bees. One thing for sure, they gon' all ride for me. Cause we ain't never phase no gang family. Praying to the maker, hoping someone get this message Throw that yak back just to calm down this aggression Cause I can't fold the rules, not when I'm the prize possession Took a couple L's, but we like to call those lessons c Coming from the burg, I was taught to pay attention Cause those snakes out hissing and they'll sneak you in a second For that I keep a circle that be tighter than a virgin c c Couple niggas screaming, fuck the law, ready for purging Tell them let the 40 touch a nigga like it's flirting